electron operates through a hollowed, symmetrical vacuum. It emits powerful microwaves that can act as a source of free energy. If you break the symmetry or close the vacuum, it no longer functions. But can you see the resemblance? These structures were never intended to hold glass within them. The controllers added the stained glass to the rose windows to shut off the magnetron's function. They closed our instruments of free energy. And they are everywhere in these structures. Interestingly, if you look at the geometry of entire sections of the structures themselves, then it becomes very evident that they function in their entirety like a cavity magnetron to generate energy. All cavity magnetrons consist of a central heated circular metal chamber in which the current leaves, and it's called a cathode. Look at that word. Cathode. Does it remind you of another word? Cathedral. Cathode. Like with everything else, they corrupt the truth and hide things in plain sight. The controllers removed most of the cathodes integral to these cavity magnetrons, but there are some structures today in which you can see traces of the old cathodes still present. The heavy reliance on symmetry and cavities within these structures is not coincidental. The symmetrical ornamentation would have worked in a similar manner causing the energetic particles to vibrate in a constant manner. The flowers within the squares can be understood as similar to acoustic resonators, working to vibrate the ions. It is here that the energy would have been continually manipulated into vibrational and electromagnetic energy of specific frequencies. Really look at these magnificent acoustic resonators. Could you craft one of these by hand a day and at such height? Why would an underdeveloped people spend so much of their time crafting such perfect symmetrical ornamentation, especially if it had no function and was purely aesthetic? They wouldn't. The cavity resonators and magnetrons would have had to have worked in partnership with a central engine or reactor contained within all these structures. Both resonator and reactor are interesting words. Just like the words conductor, generator, creator, and the name Makata, they all contain the word Tor within their linguistic structure. They hold a linguistic memory and pay homage to the torus or toroidal field. The torus is the flow of electromagnetism. Without this flow of energy, there would be no life on Earth. No one can really know for sure, but some have suggested that the engine was probably similar to a fusion reactor. The traces of these engines can be found within all of the larger generators. The empty shell of where the engine used to reside is usually, but not always, octagonal. It's been right in front of our faces the whole time. The controllers removed the engines, sometimes repurposing the space as baptistries and bandstands, sometimes just leaving the base either barren or attempting to cover them up. We see these octagonal structures in cathedrals, government buildings, mosques, and attached bandstands. And unless they have been repurposed, these structures seem to hold no overall function. They do not contribute to the overall structure. They appear superfluous and unnecessary. Theories have surfaced that the engines or central technological mechanism were similar to a tokamak. And while I do not subscribe to this idea, which will become evident as to why later in our journey, for now we will use it for illustrative purposes. A tokamak is a powerful device that uses a magnetic field to produce plasma in the form of a torus. 
the contemporary tokamaks we see are used in thermonuclear fusion power. The tokamaks toroidal field, in conjunction with the vibrating ions from the ether, will have produced a highly conductive electromagnetic field of gases called plasma. Just like our sun and ionosphere, if those of the old world used anything closely resembling a tokamak's capability, then the result would have been an abundance of free, powerful, clean electromagnetic energy that could fuel entire cities and the entire earth. These were never churches, cathedrals, castles, and parliament buildings. They were all huge engine generators. The controllers invented labels and terms, such as Renaissance, Greco-Roman, and so on, to describe the style of these structures. But as you can see, all these magnificent, impossible structures all share the same fundamental structural principles and design, despite location, time period, and cultures. And this is because they were created with the sole purpose of generating energy. And just because these structures were never used for prayer and worship does not mean they were not holy sites. The civilizations of the past had a relationship with the Source and the Holy Spirit, or the Ether, like no other. And they paid homage, reverence, and thanks to it by constructing their generators with such splendor and beauty. And not only that, but they constructed the entirety of their structures statues and ornamentation in reverence of this gift, in reverence of the energy production that made their way of life possible in the first place. <laughs> 